It it's is a blessing. A blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so let, yeah. let's let's talk about um, the program that was held recently. Let's basically talk about the outcome. Did you enjoy it? I did. <laughs> you did so much. I did. <laughs> I mean, the, the preparation and whatsoever that happened. What basically went in for you? Um, for me, I, I think um, one very interesting thing about this particular program was the fact that um, um, preparations and plans for the program didn't begin early. Because mm -hmm. um, a couple of things, uh, a, couple, a few hitches here and there, mm -hmm. and a few that demanded my attention at mm -hmm. a point in time, I think I lost track of how things were going. Yeah, so um, I think the, pre the preparation really uh, became very serious about um, a month to the program. Okay. A month to the program. And so um, uh, we had to get a team together. We got, mm. uh, we got a team uh, a team of about 250 50 plus people wow. who were just purely involved in publicity. 250? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> when, I, when I looked at the time that we had, and I knew that people can only be part of something they are aware of. Yeah. And that's, that's actually the purpose of publicity. Mm. And you can have something good to offer, mm. but people don't know about it, they, they can be there. Mm. And so um, I looked at the time frame we had, I realized that no, we, we, God just dropped the idea in my heart. Mm. We need more people to talk about this particular um, eventful event that God was putting together mm. through us. And so I, I, I created a page on WhatsApp, and then I just shared a link on my contact that... Um, I know a couple of you appreciate my ministry. I need a few of you to join me, okay. you know, okay. uh, to do some uh, flooding on the social media. Mm -hmm. I only need a hundred people, <laughs> you know. And then before I knew it, in less than about two hours, the page was full and people were complaining that I should create another one for them because they have to be part of it. <laughs> it was quite interesting. Wow, wow. You know, so we had about 250 something people on mm -hmm. who every morning uh, they put in um, contents of the program out mm -hmm. there. And so... I think out of the day, by God's grace, we were able to quite get a number of people to be mm -hmm. aware about the program. And much more, I think, also because of um, people's experiences from okay. previous... That um, was the 11th edition. That was the 11th edition. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was the 11th edition. And I think people's experiences from previous meetings also, they have spoken to their friends about it. You know, you have to be around for this program. It's yeah. exception, yeah. all of that. So, I think people's personal witness and testimony about, what, about how the program is like mm -hmm. all this period. It's also part of the, mm -hmm. the whole... Like process. the number you saw there, and then there was a lot of praying, praying to went into it. Um, a few people here, and they came together to try and see how they can put one or two few resources together, and um, favors here and there, a few things here and there. For me, I think that um, um, of course there's always there's always room for greater improvement. Yeah, yeah but for me, um, at this moment, what we had there, we thank God for how it went. And it was a blessing. I think everybody that came was so blessed by the program. Wow. And, and I think uh, that, that was great. Mm, okay, that's great. So let's talk about Pastor Isaiah. Mm. Getting or going on stage. What mm. do you actually do before going off stage? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have a culture of trying to always leave ready and have preparation as my lifestyle. Okay. Than just something that I do before I have to do something. Yeah, so most times... Um, my most, should I say, my most miserable time is when I'm about to get on stage. Why, why do you classify it like that? It's miserable because I don't want to ever get on stage and do what I want to do. Okay. But I want to know what he is doing so that I can partner okay. and do. And so most times, I am, I'm, there's that battle going on in my spirit, man. That your will be done is not my will. May I not go and do anything that's just of me, but it's of you. Mm -hmm. So trying to get to understand what, God, what is God really doing at that very moment, mm -hmm. that very is what is God doing? What is what is the move of God at that very moment? So that I can I can just like the ego, just just glide and okay. soar in what he is doing because it's work. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't do anything of mine. It's his people. You know, I don't know them. He mm -hmm. knows them. Yeah. He brought them. I didn't bring them. Yes, I told people about it. They could have chosen not to come. Mm. But God moved them to come. And if they are his people, he knows what food they want. There's somebody perhaps who is coming, who needs banku, spiritual banku. <laughs> who needs some, some watches. Who needs... He knows everyone's need. Okay. And, and sometimes, as ministers, we can sometimes assume a position whereby because we've been doing something over and over again, now we think we know what the people want. We want to give them what we think they want. And then they go and give them what you think that they want, and you actually didn't feed them. You killed them. Mm. 
And so for me, all that going on within my mind at that very moment, just from the time I moved from my seat to that place, all that period before even that time, I'm restless. I'm so restless. I'm so restless. Yes, I've rehearsed. There's repertoire. But I'm not the type who just tied down myself to repertoire necessarily. Okay. Even with the repertoire, how I've arranged it, mm. it could be a reshuffling. It okay. could be the same songs. might not be the same songs. But that is, that is me. Mm. I'm not saying that's the rule everybody should take. No, but that, that's me. Mm. You know, if anybody out there is blessed by my ministry, mm. then, of course, to everybody, everybody has only secret. So for me, in my, in my work with God over the years, over the period, it's not what I think I've prepared to give mm. that should be given. Okay. But what he prefers, not what I've prepared. Wow. And so that preference, his preference, mm. my preparation, is a challenge. I don't want to do what I want. I want to do what he wants. Wow. Okay. At times, do you, do you also get tensed? Uh, I'm always your... tensed. Always? Yes, I'm always tensed. I've been, I've been, I've been on stage <laughs> for a while. Let me not be too look like I see that. But I've been on stage for a while. At least I've been on stage for a while. If, if nothing at all, I think I've stood before people... To either talk to them or yeah. or lead them in a time of worship, mm. whatever in has to do with me engaging with audience. I've been mm -hmm. doing at least not less than twenty two years. Twenty two, not, less than, not less than years. yeah. I don't even want to ask what I years. I don't want to ask what I think. But let, not less than twenty two to twenty three years. Mm. All right. But there's no single day that I've gone on there that I was not anxious. That there was no sense of pressure on my spirit, man. I'm, wow. I'm naturally a shy person. People don't believe that. I'm naturally a very shy... <laughs> if you tell me to, I'm not sure I will be doing yes. the same thing. I'm but... naturally a shy person, an introvert. Mm. I can be by myself for days. But when you get on stage, it's something different. It, because of what he wanted to do. When I knew he was going to make me do this, I told the father. Mm. I said, you know, I'm, I'm timid. I can, be, I can be timid. I can be reserved. I'm shy. But give me the boldness when I stand before your people. May I be able to minister what you want them to hear, what you mm. want them to encounter. And may I be, even be so bold to look into their eyes and speak to them. But when I'm done, you can take that away, no problem. <laughs> so yeah. so when, the, when the tension comes, mm. usually what do you do to overcome it quick enough? Um, most times I've not even overcome I'm still honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. But I see, some I've come to realize that um, I don't think courage is the absence of fear. Okay. I rather think that... The courageous uses fear mm. at his advantage. Wow. So fear is with the intention to give him a disadvantage, but he takes the fear and the fear becomes motivation for him. Wow. So it, yes, there's a presence of fear. So whether you have no influence over me, what have to be done must be done. Mm. You know, so the, the, most times I'm talking to the Lord to help me out. You know, sometimes when, when I get on stage, I, I sometimes, not every time that I say, say hallelujah, it means that God says, say hallelujah. Mm. Sometimes it's just a way to just get it off and let's all be together. <laughs> okay. Come on, you know, okay. Okay. Yeah, yes, <laughs> you yes, know yes, and yes. the course of doing that and then speaking to myself, what God is telling me, to, you know, to myself, I, I'm, I, I have not given a spirit of timidity mm. or fear, but of boldness, I speak to, I preach to Isaiah, come on, receive the word first yeah. before you get there, mm. you know, and, and he is my strength. Mm. You know, and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. So you look at me and you go like, wow, this man is just so comfortable on stage. Mm. He's so comfortable, but you don't realize that I'm actually enveloped inside grace. Grace is the one doing the yeah. whole thing there. Because what know? happened was that after the program, mm. a friend of mine also, uh, I mean, we met after the program. He was mm. like, I really like how the man was just relaxed on stage. <laughs> I see, I, see we, I mean, nothing was bothering him. He was just, <laughs> and I was just like, have, have you really seen this man like performing or ministering before? That's how he. That, that's that's his frequency. Yeah. That's his frequency. He always yes, writes on his it's like just, that. It's just. It's just. I mean, the, the, the truth matter is that I remember those times when I was trying to deal with this this issue of um, this tension and all that. Yeah. And I tell myself that okay, Isaiah, um, okay, uh, if it's not my program. Yeah. Okay. Even if it's my program, I'm still tense. You know, it's amazing. It's like it's really interesting. I will tell myself that, okay, for you to be on that bill, it means that God told them to put you there. Okay. And you have something to offer nobody has to offer. Yeah. And something important. Mm. Stand there and do what you have to do. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that is so you know, I'm saying this to let people understand. Sometimes when some of us uh, begin to do things that it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of creating it's, it's, it's kind of wow, wow, wow. We seem not to tell people the reality. Mm. We still, to tell them, we still have to tell them that we battle with some of the things that they are battling that's keeping them round, the right there. But the, the, the difference is that we've exalted God's word above what we see. And I think it's good to let people know. 
So if somebody is out there and God is calling you to do something, you'll not be like Moses and you're waiting for an Aaron to come and speak on your behalf. Aaron might be your problem later. So if God is telling you to do something, get up and do it. He knew you before he spoke to you. Okay. If God tells you to do something, it means he has given you what it takes to do it. Mm. So you do it. God will never demand where he hasn't deposited anything. God will not take from where he has not given. So do we lack the understanding of that? I think understanding is one of our major challenges. That's the truth. You know, what we don't realize is that if God tells you that, that okay, so, so, so my son, give me an iPhone mm. as a seed right now. It means you have it before he asks you to give it. Mm. God will never ask of you what he has. He's not a devil. The devil tries to demand from where he has not sown. God will, anytime God will be bold and be courageous, means there's boldness there. But you will never see what he has provided for until you take the step on what he has asked you to take the step on. So he comes to Abraham and tells Abraham that sacrifice me your son. Yeah. And Abraham says, okay, sir, I'm doing it right away. Not knowing there's a provision already made. But do you realize that the provision never re was never unveiled yeah. until, until his heart had done the act. Mm. Get it? Until, until his heart had done the act. Mm. So when you read the story, his hand or his knife didn't touch the boy, but his heart had killed the boy. So his heart action had preceded his hand action. And God is after the heart action. So as soon as the heart action was executed, God said, enough, then they unveiled the provision. The same roots that Abraham passed and didn't see the ram, the same place, as soon as his heart did it his eyes saw what god had made mm. available so how how do this generation get back to that that place of understanding yes of it's, course it's, it's a walk now you see god never came right after that a um isaac was born god didn't come in and say give him the son mm. i was sharing with one of my friends today one of my young friends i was telling him that faith takes you on a journey faith is not magic Faith has your maturity also at heart. Faith is not sudden. Mm. Faith is a process. A vision is given from eternity into time. Mm. It means that God respects time. Time has something called process. Now, the journey to the ultimate actualization of what God gave you as a vision at the beginning. Actually, I see vision as destiny unveiled mm. at the origin wow. so before you get there i give an idea but it's not a total idea actually mm. so that the scripture can be fulfilled he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think god can give you a picture of tomorrow but the, the real content of the picture maybe he's just giving you a one dimension just to give you hope when you get to realize that when you look at the, the three dimension wow this is huge he has surprised you yeah. but god gives you a picture that becomes a hope. That's, that's, that's a called vision. Mm. Vision is capturing the future that God has already sculptured. Wow. So being able to capture it. All right. Now, faith not is on a, on, on a journey. You have to understand faith is a journey. Faith is a journey. This because, oh, glory to God. Faith is a journey. And amazingly, mm. faith has classes. So, you need faith to now fulfill what God is saying. Mm. So, God has shown you that, okay, son, I, you're going to be leading 20,000 people in an intimate worship with me. And you go like, yes, Lord. Then you, you quickly call a friend. God, just give me a vision. Oh, glory to God. So let's go. Let's go and ask the price of, uh, of uh, Independence Square. Yeah. That's foolishness. Faith doesn't do that. When you stay with the Lord in conversation, he will tell you, begin from where you are. So the 20,000 might be that at that very moment, you have a circle of 20 people. Mm. There's so faith 20, available. Yeah. There's faith available to trust God to get provision for a 50-seat auditorium. There's faith available at that level to trust God for uh, uh, the provision of instruments that will cater for 50 people. Hmm. Now, when you now put faith at that level to work, every event of faith becomes a stepping stone that fuels faith for the next event. Okay. 
So the faith journey is marked with events, faith-filled events. Mm. Every event is a full station for faith. Mm. So you now come to the place where you now say, fine, now we are going for that 50,000 capacity auditorium. What's happening? Through that journey, your faith has so grown. You now have the network. You now have the, the people. You have the now the fact that you have access, you have them, they are, they are, they've been available, you have access to them yet. Okay. So it's the faith that will now make you say, now we can dare the 50,000, mm. or we can dare the 20,000. They now go to them, Charlie, this is what I have in mind. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. I, I get it. So <laughs> I, I realized during the program, you, you made mention of uh, the area of a worshipper, mm. where you started. Mm. You said somebody advised you to go for, I think, National Theatre. Yeah. But so you the, couldn't go. Yeah. I, I, the, 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 there's a very dear person of mine said that, that the way God's grace upon my life, we just go and pick conferences that's going to be filled. Mm. And okay. I said, like, I don't, I don't feel led. And, and, and at that time, I, I think the person felt that I was faithless. Mm. But I was not faithless. I wasn't faithless, but I was, I measured by God's grace, the dimension of impact. It would be an error for me to go and waste resources. Because I believe at that time, if I'd done a program at that level, mm. maybe I could get people to come there, but maybe I was not built to handle the pressure and the pleasures that come with that event. Mm. Wow. For, for everything you accomplish, there is the pleasure and the pressure. Many people have not, a, few, a, a lot of young people don't yeah. realize something that mm. God wants to build in you the capacity to handle the aftermaths of what you accomplish. Mm. Because when you don't have the capacity to handle what the aftermath of what you have accomplished, you're going to kill tomorrow. Mm. That's called pride. So by the time you've done a program and everybody's view, wow, what an amazing program, what an amazing program, then you're inviting here and there and then it gets into your head and then you're up there, you have killed what you can do next. Mm -hmm. But the faith process takes care of everything about you. It builds capacity in you. It enlarges your focus. So yes, great program for Diary of a Worshipper, but my vision is too big. What I see is big. Mm -hmm. So what has been done cannot be a place for me to rest. Mm. Rather, it's an assurance that what I see ahead can be done. Okay. So what has been done mm. inspires me to know that what can be done can be done. But however, gives regard to process. Wow. <laughs> let's, let's get back to the program. You, you <laughs> gave an advice mm. <laughs> to the young ministers. Mm. And I, I don't know, probably maybe you took it like just... An advice, but it was like a bomb you just left with us. What was that bomb? I don't remember. Okay, so, 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 so let, let, me, let me take it back. So, Pastor Zaya, after ministering, said, if you're a young minister here, and you want to really work in the vineyard, don't rush. It has and, rush out. Yes, and you realize that the, the whole place was like, <laughs> just kept <laughs> quiet. Like, what, what just happened? <laughs> because it was as if you knew hundred or to the totality of what was happening. W what necessitated that? You know, being gifted doesn't mean you have an event. Mm. Don't let your gift lead you. And gifts can really lead. And we as a church, we can help you for your gift to lead you. Mm. The fact that you sang in church and it was so powerful and there's such glory, everybody was so blessed. That's, that should not make you agree to someone that comes to you after service that, you know what, I love your gift. I want to help you. Mm -hmm. Put the program together. Let's put the program together. No, okay. no, 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 no. No. Your gifting, mm -hmm. it is very possible that your gifting is actually matured than you, the carrier of the gift. There's a mystery there. Yeah. Your giftings can be matured more than the career. Wow. The career of the gift could be matured to what he's actually carrying. So, because of that, people, you see, people are going to come to you not because of you. They are coming to you because of what you are producing. Mm. And when they come, they are attending to your gifting. 
But human beings, we are so complex. If they see anything about you, the carrier, mm. that doesn't agree with your gifting, they will speak. They will do things. And if you don't, you're not matured for that one, it will kill you. When you die, the gift also dies. Mm. You get it? But yeah. you, need, you need to take your time. People have asked me several times, so how do I know it is time? You know it is time when you don't think about the time. Just keep preparing. You, you, it will, it's some, I don't know, how to, I'm yet to get an answer, how to properly answer that question. But I, I realized that, you know, l- let me use this statement. And it, I'm not saying that it's something that will cut across every line of thought. Mm. But in the context of what I'm talking about, I think it will make a lot of sense and explain what perhaps I want to communicate. Okay. Now, great people do not have greatness as their goal, but have service as their pursuit. Mm. And greatness comes as a bonus. So the, the statement that people normally make that, this person or this guy is born with greatness. You are born in greatness, but you must grow into greatness. Okay. Being born into great, being born into greatness, is different from growing into greatness. You can be born with greatness, but you must grow into greatness. Mm. You are born with greatness shows your potential. Mm. Your potential. Potential is what you are that you've not yet become. What you are that has not yet been seen. So yes. You are born with greatness. You are born with greatness. Mm. But it must grow into greatness. You are born with it. You must grow into it. It means that you must have the capacity to handle that greatness. And that greatness will destroy you. Mm. Wow. And that is what happens. You know, this current generation is so gifted. Oh, so, so gifted. So gifted. But you see, people of God, you are gifted, but you're not matured. The gifting will kill you. Well, so how long did it take you to get into the light? Or you have you also been an underground uh, minister before? Hmm, underground. Quote <laughs> 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 quote. I understand. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean understand. Church, you know, but now I'm sure what you mean by light is that now yeah. people getting to know your uh-huh, ministry and all of that. Uh-huh. You know, I um. Hmm. <laughs> 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 I've always been in church. <laughs> I've been in church, seven in church. Mm. You know, seven in church. Used to play drums in church. As an evangelism team, prayer team. As in the as the youth vice president when I was much younger. In fact, when I was in the youth when I was in the youth ministry as a den, I was a youth vice president. And as a den, I think I was about 14 years. I was just 14 years. Mm. My, my youth president was like 25 years. I was the youngest person in the youth ministry yet I was a vice president. 14 years of yes, age. Yes, yes. I had a privilege, I had a rare privilege by the grace of God to embrace the gift of salvation when I was 11. And it wasn't a challenge for you? A Especially challenge? at that age, 14 years, and you have people probably are leading and they are much older you than know, you. know... Leadership crisis, I believe, begins with when you are not being led by your leadership. Okay. Leadership is not a position. It's a life. It's what you are. Mm. If you are not and you try to be, that is when you have a crisis. The things Jesus began both to do and to teach. The first person that you have to, you have to convince that you want to lead that person. You want to say, I want to lead you. Follow me and I'll make you a great person. It's called self. Hmm. If I can lead myself to pray for four hours, then leading people to pray two hours is no problem. If I can lead myself to live a consecrated life, then to lead people to live a consecrated life is no problem. Leadership is first a lifestyle. Hmm. It's not a position. It's not a position at all. So I had a life and that life was a blessing to people. And I... I, when they gave me that, that responsibility, responsibility, that, I love that word, responsibility. Yeah. You see the word response to ability. Okay. So when your ability, the more you learn to respond to ability, the more responsibility comes to you. Mm. You, you get it? I get it. Uh-huh. So for me, it wasn't the position. So I didn't see anything because they saw the impact when I tell them, we are meeting church to pray because I already go there to pray. I already go there to read my Bible. I already go there to win souls. So come, let's pray. They come. 
Because there's an aspect of leadership that John Simmons talks about. John Simmons talks about influence. Mm. It's a very, very key you know, factor in leadership, influence. Mm. But you see, I believe that influence is actually a product of you being an example. Wow. So Pastor Zai didn't start from <laughs> just ministry. Oh, no, no, no. I you mean, went through... No, I've been ministering, actually, but... <laughs> the one that they will see. <laughs> okay. Because, okay. actually, ministry does not begin in the public. Hmm. It begins in the private. And never leaves the private. It's always in the private. Hmm. The public dies when the private dies. Wow. Yes. Wow. So, so was somebody gifted, mm -hmm. can that person stay, quote and unquote, the underground again, probably like five... Plus, yes. You know, I, I don't want to put time into it. Okay. However, mm. time to is, is important when it comes to process. But, um, um, okay, like the story of the Exodus, mm -hmm. Israel mm -hmm. Exodus, and from Egypt to the Promised Land. It is said, uh, research has shown that actually there was a path from um, the Egypt to Canaan land that would have just taken less than some few weeks. Just a few weeks, I think about three weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And it have been there. In fact, some even say three days mm -hmm. to get there. But God didn't take them through that place because God realized if you take them there and they see the road back, any small thing happened, they run back. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they had been delivered from Egypt, but Egypt had been delivered from them. Wow. They were captives of Egypt, but Egypt was also their captive. Mm -hmm. So, Pharaoh, they, they were captives in Egypt. So, Egypt contained them, but it also contained Egypt. So mm. God took them out of Egypt, Egypt and God had to take Egypt out of them. Mm. So the 40 years was not the scheduled time to take Egypt out of them. But their reluctance to God's operations in their life is what prolonged their timing. Mm. You get the idea? Yes. So how ready, how vulnerable you are to God's making is what determines the duration of the process of you being made. Okay. And one of the number one things when it comes to the issue of being made is submission to authority. Submission. It's submission to authority. Look at Jesus Christ. He submitted himself to the counsel of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. He submitted. That is the greatest thing that everybody has to learn. Submission. And that is what you stay in your church with your gifting. Listen to what your pastor is saying. Does you. It builds in you the capacity to submit. Submission will breed humility. It will breed meekness. These are the qualities that you need. That, that, that it, they are the character mm -hmm. that preserves your charisma or your gifting. That gives the capacity to handle everything that the gifting brings to you. Submission. Mm. submission and so if you are submissive to the counsel of god it could take five years could take 10 years could take three years but don't look at time just be devoted in serving god and his people and then god will lift you up and you know he will lift you up wow, wow. and the truth matter is that not everybody will come into in quote limelight mm. when it comes to god the spotlight is not defined by men it's defined by him mm. god is by the spotlight God puts what's for that. God can decide to just look, just put you somewhere in Boche and you are fulfilling purpose and the spotlight. You must be found faithful in the little and then you hand over much to you. Mm. It's an issue of capacity. Okay. Yeah. Wow. wow. So should we pray more for capacity? We should pray more for the grace to walk with God. Hmm. To be Christians. And not, not for the capacity to handle... Oh, that comes along as you're praying. Okay. Because prayer, fasting, prayer, fasting, studying the word of God, going to church, are all capacity builders. Mm. You build capacity. You build capacity. So, so it's like building intellectual capacity. Going to school. School, education, builds intellectual capacity. Mm. So studying your Bible, praying, fasting, winning souls, going to church, serving, every activity about the kingdom mm. that you do are all capacity builders. Wow. And interestingly, a person who is lifting weights in the gymnasium, okay, yeah. doesn't even know when the muscles begin to show. His own focus is to make sure I'm lifting, I'm diligent in lifting, Until. and taking the instructions. Mm. Then people will now begin to say that, ah, Charlie, Charlie, your six-pack is coming. Oh, really? I didn't see it. He's busy lifting mm. and taking instructions from the instructor. The effects of taking instructions and doing what he's better to do is most of the times first recognized by people that look at him. 
Mm. But his goal is just that, uh, yes, I want to be slim, but I'm busy at doing what takes me to the slimness. Yeah. It's like a person goes to sow a seed and says, after putting the seed in the ground, after one hour goes to go and remove the seed and check if the seed is growing. You don't do that. You put the seed there, you forget about the seed. All you have to do is just weed around the seed, provide whatever interest the seed needs, and be there to protect the seed. That's all. As to what happens to the seed in the ground is left to the creator and the ground. Mm. That's happening there. You also just to expect that indeed that seed will die and rise again and not come alone, but will come with other friends. Wow. I don't know, but let me just ask. In the next years to come, Diary of Worship, wouldn't it be good if you add... Uh, uh, some kind of like what we're talking about, uh, do some lectures or some other things to it. I think you just give me the idea. Actually, it's, it's part of it. Okay. You know, but interest, I think I just got the idea when you're talking to me. Yeah. I'm just imagining Dive Washba and maybe um, we're starting somewhere around three o'clock and the next three to, to, to two hours or so. Yeah. And we have you there, and you're interviewing me mm. and I'm talking. Yeah. That'd be great. Let's do that next year. Let's try that next year. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you outdoored a, a new book to you. Yeah, and, and yeah, program. What's yeah. the title and what does the book basically talk about? All right, so the book is The Diary of the Worshipper. Mm. The, the Diary of, of the, the worshiper. worshiper. You know, the program is The Diary of, of a, worshiper. a Worshipper. But this one is The Diary of the Worshipper. So mm. the Worshipper is me mm. and this is my diary. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and I have a subtitle there, yeah. My Reflections on Worship. Mm. Um, a, 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 a young friend of mine said something that um, she wanted to ask me a question after diary mm. and asked me that, why are you so different when it comes to worship leading? Yes. And she said, she was going to ask me that question after diary and then I launched the book. She took the book. After reading the book, she said, I'm not asking the question again. And then the book that's answers that's my question. <laughs> now, um, my friends of worship, I began to look at some things, some things that, that I've come to learn over the years, personally, when it comes to worship. I don't yeah. see worship as an activity. Mm. I see worship as a very, very serious spiritual avenue mm. where great, awesome things God has packaged in there. Wow. All right? And so, like, like you see when you pick the book, um, I, I shared a bit about the, something you have to understand about worship. That worship is a place of revelation. Mm. That's why you always say it's not a concert. Not a concert. Yeah. It's more than a concert. I, this year I said, it's not a concert, it's a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm waiting for the day I'll, I'll do, I'll do a, a, an edition of Dar Dar Washpa where yeah. I will not really sing. I'll just have a lot of my friends on the bill and I'll just be emceeing. I'll just be singing intermittently in between them. Just like okay. that. Okay. You know, just, it's just like a banquet of yeah. worship, yeah. of different graces. Mm. Oh, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no. So the, 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 the book... Or begins to open your understanding or mm. brings to your consideration mm. certain aspects that perhaps will spice up mm. the whole experience when it comes to worship okay as it is this is mm. the volume one mm. actually and so there's a portion of the book where i talk about um let me see if i can find um i don't read it so i'm not able to buy the book <laughs> all right so there's a, there's a chapter that talk about faith in worship gym Mm. Now, in this chapter, I look at faith, I look at worship as a gymnasium. Okay. And that faith goes there to lift the muscles, mm. you know, get okay. the muscles beyond. So, actually, up. what it means is that in worship, my faith must not deplete. Mm. My faith must be inflated. My faith must become stronger. So, it's an error for me to have a time of expressing my adoration unto the Lord and then finish and then become depressed and people, oh, I'm broken, I'm broken. And most I realize a lot of worship leaders are frustrated. Why? Let me give you an example. Okay. When you see a petrol tanker, a fuel tanker, uh, that's the one that the supplies, the yeah. tanker, the big one. Okay. It has two tanks. There's the tank on the truck mm -hmm. and the tank under the truck. Mm. Now, the tank on the truck does not fuel the engine of the truck. Mm. Is the tank under the truck that fuels the engine? The engine. What it means is this: the 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 content in the tank on the truck is for supply. The content in the tank under the truck yeah. is for motion. Okay. So it's possible for the fuel that gives its motion to get finished mm. and be stagnated yet 
have mm. content in the tank on it to supply. Mm. Okay. I'm in there already. <laughs> you get a whole yes, idea? Yes, yes. Good. So, most times, we are feeding people, we are taking from the Lord and feeding people, mm. and we are not being fed. Mm. And then we are doing a typical thing of what, how Christ fed the 5,000. Okay. So, Christ lists the, the, this insufficient meal before mm. God and says, Father, thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful one here. And the Bible says he gives to the disciples yeah. to share. So they take to share. I never saw anywhere in the narratives yeah. where that they also ate. I have they not checked it yet. They shared. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they ate. So in my context of what I'm talking about right now, yeah. I didn't see it when I read, when I read um, John chapter 5. Mm. I didn't see it that they also fed. The Bible says that they shared and everybody had eaten and then they got the fragments and then took it to the boy's house. Mm. So could it be that they shared but they were not fed though in the midst of abundance and then the fragments went to the boy's house and they'd be hungry? For this context, I could say that there are a lot of ministers we take from Jesus and we share. We are, we are, okay. we, we are more concerned about sharing. But we don't benefit. But not feeding. You must feed. So when you lift your voice and you sing, you are great, yes, you are holy one. Mm. Okay. When you sang it, were you just a conduit? Or were you just an example? Peter and John at the gate called beautiful told the man that such as we have, Forgiven. we give you, not such as we can make up. No, such as we have, we have it. Yeah. So what we are having, we are giving you, we are tickets. Mm. We have it. So it means that we have it. When we give you, we don't lack. We have it. We know. We know. Really that which we have been told. John, first John 1, what we have been told. That, that we have heard. That our hands have handled. We now, we are witnesses. We now, we partake, we partook of it. And of mm. it, we give unto you. Mm. Many of us don't partake of what we talk about. Wow. So we talk about the Jesus that we've not had an encounter with. Will be used and be useless. <laughs> it feels like it's a, it's a, it's a great deficiency. So I mean, you find out that we only pray when we're going to minister. Uh-huh. We only fast when we're going to have a program. Mm. But you're going to fast just to have that time with the Lord. It's not in our calendar. Mm. If you ever see a minister go on a chair to go and fast and pray, even when he's going, he has a camera and it's already on Instagram. And I'm, 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 I'm going to actually send you a prayer request. I'm at Achia. I don't know when <laughs> your private preparation became a public announcement. Mm. Preparations are not for the public. It's private. It's the results. That's for the public. Mm. They don't know where you're coming from. But your products cannot be denied. That is powerful. Wow. <laughs> so how, how do we get this book? Where and where? Is, is All right. For at? now, you know, I, 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 have, um, I have a few copies. And I want to make sure that um, we get it out there mm. before we print quite a large sum. Okay. And then begin to put out the bookshelves and all that. But for mm. now, um, I can make a number available. When you call okay. this number, mm. Mm. this person will ensure that you get a copy of the book. Okay. However, you can also come to my church right here at Shiashi, Domino Chapel International. Great. Um, Shiashi, mm. we just, I just sent the XGI um, building. building. When, you, when you come here, um, you get a copy of the book mm. right from, from the church. Okay. Yeah, and any, any way you see me, if you see me on any program and is within your area, just rush to that place. The book will be available. As okay. I move, the book is with me. <laughs> <laughs> so you can call this number 024-137-5871. Um, mm. Okay. 024-137-5871. Mm. You call this number. This wonderful dear one of mine will ensure that he links up with somebody okay. who has a copy. Mm. And you make sure they get a copy. And, mm. and please read it. I, I, I think it's a blessing. I think so. I know it will be a blessing. I think it's a blessing. It's, it's already a, a blessing. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> also, are we expecting... This is volume one. Yeah. Volume two, three... Yeah, many books are going to come. You know, this was a surprise to everybody. Yeah, I, I, it was a surprise to you as well. Yeah, it's a surprise. Many, many people didn't know that you have that. My church didn't know I was writing a book. Only my wife knew I was writing a book. My wife and the, the brother, a dear, wonderful friend of mine... He's not a pastor. <laughs> He's not a pastor. <laughs> pastor Ben. <laughs> he was like, man of God, this book mm. must come out. This book must... He gave me so much pressure. Mm. You know, I had so many things doing, but I said, no, man of God, I sense in my spirit, man, this is the time to let these books begin to come out. Mm. And then I had to write this book in about four days or so, three to four days or thereabout. Mm. You know, and I had to write it. And by God's grace, 
it worked out. We, we, we made up every effort by God's grace, yeah. right? And God gave us a flow. So it was coming out just typing. And I love to type, so I was typing very fast. Mm. And I was able to type as much as I could. Well, so uh, next year is going to be the 12th the edition. The 12th edition, my Jesus. It's going, to be awesome. worship. it's going to be something else. Wow. It's going to be something else. Something else. It's going to be... If, if anybody didn't make it for this, this year's... Uh, mm. no, don't miss next year. Mm-mm-mm. I was glad I didn't miss it. But... Mm. Next year, Father's Lord. Mm. I don't know what's going to mm. happen. But next year, I think when you come, you come with a blanket because you're not going to go home. <laughs> There'll be so much glory. We're going to prepare our hearts so seriously for next year by God's mm. grace. As God keeps us on. It's going to be awesome. I, 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 the team... Is not finalized. It's still in my spirit, my master. But the date is 18th October, 2020, mm. by God's grace. And we'll have to change venue because this year the place was already full. You've already checked that on your calendar. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so 18th October, 2020. Dive of Worship 12. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. It's wow. going to be great. <laughs> I don't need anybody to tell me. <laughs> so so uh, let, me, let me ask. Uh, mm. Maybe this could be the last question. Are we expecting okay. Pastor Isaiah to... Do a reggae song sometime in the future, a funk song, or a praise oh, sometime? Sometimes. Okay, <laughs> interestingly, interesting, I, have, I have a couple of sons that I, I literally share with them mm. how to do reggae songs, okay. how to lead praise, mm. and all of that. Um, once in a while in church, I do some of them. But I realize that naturally, as a person, mm. I communicate better in calmness. Okay. I communicate better. When I'm calm, I communicate better. I'm a much calm person. So I realize that when it comes to commune with God in praise and worship, I commune better and I'm more connected when I'm calm. And that's why I do the ballad. I do the R&B. That's in, 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 the, in, the, in gospel. Okay. Right? Uh-huh. Then once in a while, I will do the funk. Once in a while. But I communicate better in my calmness. Mm. That's how I see Pastor Zaya. You hardly hear Pastor Zaya doing a reggae. Yeah. But in church, sometimes when I'm, I, I feel led, I just do a reggae. Not just like I feel like doing a reggae. I do a reggae. Yeah, but I have, I have, I realize that I, I'm comfortable, you know, communities. And because of my mindset of the fact that um, it's what I'm experiencing that can communicate better to you. Okay. And this is how I communicate better. That's how you see me in that sense mm. but pe- also people that follow my ministry very well realize that at certain times too when i would do a program with people and maybe at the end you just see me just go wild with some with some one song that's wild just do okay. it because mm. i don't mind i just sense that should be done okay. and i get it done so uh, it's not that i can't do it i i can do it mm. you know um it's something that is there i used to do it but I, when I found out this, how I communicate better, I, I'm, I've got to stuck to this. Okay. Now, because I've got to stuck to this style, of course, whatever you don't rehearse often, become rusty in it. Mm. Yeah, so don't force me to do that because you're going to destroy my history. <laughs> so, 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 somebody invite you to a praise program, a full praise program. Why would you invite me to a free program? There are many people that together. <laughs> I will not go. That's the truth. That's the truth. I will not go. <laughs> Okay. It's like a footballer. I'm a midfielder. Why, okay. why, why make me a def- defender? Mm. I'll fail. I won't fail. I'm doing my best there. And, and that for me, that doesn't make sense. Mm. So I, I, will, I will quote the words of, of, of David to Saul. He says, I have not tried this. Mm. What I'm used to is slink. Give me slink. <laughs> Let me do something with this thing. You know that I can do something with this thing. Okay. Uh-huh. If I have to do that, I have to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. Mm. And I'm somebody that I don't do something I have not... I'm not sure I've really helped, you know, I'm in command of it. I must mm. have a le- level of command. Uh, so that, because for you to influence, you must have a dimension of command also. What, what you're talking about. Mm. Yeah, so. Wow. <laughs> First of all, we are grateful. Thank you, sir. We are grateful for hosting us. You know, when you ask this question, I almost said that. Have you ever had Don Moy leading high life? <laughs> 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 you know, but I, I with time, I mean. See what happened. See what Thank happened. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for hosting us. Thank you. We can't really wait for the 12th edition. Yes. Of that awesome. worship. 18th October. Mm. Venue will come later. Mm. And the guests that come will come later too. Thank you. That's going to be great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So God. you just have to expect more from the camp of Pastor Isaiah. He's a CEO of the Impact Impact Valley Ministries. Ministries. Yes. Valley um, Ministries. So, resident pastor of the Million Chapel International. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So, I mean, when you're in town in Accra, you need to visit. Visit. It's not. I mean, your enemy is in place. The church yeah, is just here. Just here. Just, uh, just So just when I'm coming, I have to try and bring you to. Us. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. So in our next episode, you don't have to miss it. You don't have to miss it. God bless you for watching. Thank you. Wow. So,